Hello and welcome to bsdtutorial.org. Today we will set up OpenBSD and we're going to make it very simple this time. Uh, this will be a simple installation which means that uh, we will not make any partitioning, instead we will use the automatic drives layout which is to use the entire disk. So before we start I would just like to give a warning that uh, if you use real hardware all the data of the hard disk drive you're going to use now will be erased so I cannot take any responsibility for any lost data so make backups if you need. So um, let's get started. The first thing I would like to say is that I'm going to use VMware. Uh, VMware is an excellent tool in my case when I'm going to make some educational proposals for this uh, subject because uh, then it's easy for me to show you and to make a good recording so that's why I'm using it. It's also nice for beginners to use this when they learn operating systems or want to elaborate with operating system. So I want you to create a new virtual machine. And uh, I'm going to browse for an ISO image. And uh, I will take another tutorial of how you can download this ISO image. Now you proceed with this image. And then you select other operating system in case OpenBSD doesn't exist, like in my case, just take other. And I continue with next. And I'm going to select a place where I should want to put the virtual machine. And I put it on my hard disk drive there. And I name it OpenBSD. And I proceed. Alright, so 8 gigabyte is actually enough uh, as a virtual disk in this case. You can increase if you want. That's fine. We're going to make some um, some uh, options here if you press customize hardware. We need to uh, go to the uh, network adapters and select bridged. If we don't select the bridged one, uh, we won't have it speaking out on the internet as if it were its own network card. We would use the machine network card instead uh, in Windows. Uh, we are using the network card through Windows, but it's more like if you bridge it, it would be like if it was a network card going out from the machine and emulated one which can be reached outside very simple without any routing between Windows and a virtual machine. So this will save you a lot of time. Uh, okay, so then that's just one important thing. You can increase the RAM memory if you want. I would like to, 256 is enough, but I take at least 512 megabytes here. So then press OK. Uh, when you're in this uh, step, you just press finish and uh, it will boot up. So if you installed it on a real machine, this is what you will see right now. And you just wait here and it will load up the installation menu for us. So this will be a very, very simple installation this time. So um, I won't pick uh, any big... Uh, I won't select to describe anything in, in, in depth detail. I will just uh, guide you how you can simply start and how you can install it and to get it running as smooth as possible. So we save the technical part to the advanced installation tutorial. So here is where it's arrived. Uh, we're not going to make any upgrade or using the shell. Instead, we're going to make a pure installation. So press just the I. Sorry, I need to stand in the virtual machine also. You press the I key and you press return. And now it's ask us what keyboard layout we want. So in my case, I want to check which one do we have. So I'm going to make a question mark and press return. To make question mark and press return will show us which different keyboard layouts are available. You can see, in my case, I want to have the Swedish one since I'm using a Swedish keyboard. Uh, or you, perhaps you want to have the US server, for example, I don't know. So select one you want, you just type the two letters and press return, like this. And we're going to pick a host name for the machine. I would like to call my machine Puffy. Puffy is the, the Blowfish logotype, the name of that one that they have. So I call it Puffy, it's very cute. So here we can select which network call we want to configure. Um, you can see here which network cards are available. And uh, in, in the case, if the physical one is this one, in my case, VIC0. 
So this one is already, you can see that here it's already selected, so we don't need to change it. In my case, I don't need to select it because this is the one I want to use. So I'm going to press return here to configure that one. Uh, for now, I would like to configure it with a dynamic host configuration protocol to get one dynamic IP address. So I just press return here. It's all, you can see options that are already given are standing there. Else, if you want to apply, like for example, none as an option, you just write simply none in here instead. But then I want to use the DHCP, which is pre-selected here. I press return here. And it makes a DHCP recovery, a uh, mean discovery, and it gets a request from my router. And you can see I was getting the IP address, which is this one. And now it's asked if we want to have an IPv6 address. In my case, I don't want one this time. So I just go ahead, press return, which was the known option here. Um, and now it's asked if we want to continue anything more uh, to to configure anything more in the network. I'm pretty much uh, finished here, so I take it down. And um, it was, now it has all the information that it was needing for the network part. Uh, and I don't want to make any manual configuration right now. Uh, there will be a tutorial uh, which includes how to make all the manual setting of network and network cards uh, that will describe in detail how you can put static addresses instead of the ones we are using now. Uh, but this is just installation, so we don't focus anything of that right now. So I press no here. And now it's asked what root password you want. This won't be displayed on the display as you can see. I'm writing a password here. And it didn't show anything, of course. And it wants a confirmation to write again. Uh, what this means, start SHHD means if we want to enable the secure shell daemon. Uh, this one is required if you want to be able to remote control your, your OpenBSD as, uh, machine. And of course, that's what we want. It's secure, it's encrypted and everything we need. One thing I want you to remember though is that um, OpenBSD by default permits road login to, to the SS, SSH the secure shell I mean uh, many has been asking or few people have been asking me isn't that bad well I would say no it's not because it's encrypted the who should steal an encrypted password and use it they cannot as long as they don't have your keys they are not able to use it so even if they sniff traffic and you're logging in with the, with that password it won't happen any problems so I mean it's secure and Rote is enabled by default, but for example, on FreeBSD, the Rote account aren't, is not enabled by default. Instead, we need to, in FreeBSD, it has to be enabled in the, in the, SS, in the secure shell options in the ETC configs. But um, that one is covered also in a tutorial. If you need to look it at FreeBSD, we also have that tutorial available. So just select yes, we want it, or else we will not be able to remote control it. If you don't want to have it, of course, take no here. And now it's asked if you want to have the NTPD. I select no in this case. And uh, do we, are we going to use a graphical interface? Well, I would say yes here. And now if we want to, to have the XDM started by default. Uh, I, I don't like this to have it started by default, so I, I select the pre-selected option here, which is no. So uh, this one, I don't want to enable any console port right now. And uh, if we want to add a user here, we can add a user, but we will add them later, so no worries right now. Just continue. And the, the time zone is correct for me. Else you just make a question mark to bring out the question, uh, the, the, the different time zones available. And here things starts to happen. Now it's asked which is the disk we want to use. And in case it's only found, found one disk here, it's the VD0. If you want to select that disk, just press return. You can see here, as, as I was saying before, here is the pre-selected option. And uh, I wanted to use DU, DUIDs rather than to have the, uh, 
the device names in FS tab. So I select yes here also. In this installation tutorial, we are going to make it very simple. So for that reason, we're going to use the entire disk and to wipe it out and to install OpenBSD upon it. So anything you have on this disk will be deleted. Just remember that. So I don't take any responsibility if you lose anything here. Okay, I proceed with to use the entire disk and it's already pre-selected. Okay, so here we have the how the layout will be. And as you can see, here is the sizes. And here's the mounting point. For example, 1483 megabytes will be will be made available for the home directory. Uh, for example, that's how you read it. Uh, we don't need to focus so much on it right now. So we just continue here. Now it's uh, fixing the disk to make the partitioning and everything like that. And what we need to do now is that uh, OpenBSD wants us to uh, to select w w what type of media do we have when we install it. In my case, it's a CD since we were using an ISO image. So the CD option is already pre-selected, so press return here. Now it says the available CD-ROM is uh, and the seed ROM is this one, the device name. And of course, that's the one, and we pick it. And the patch name is already selected, so we just continue here. Okay, so here we are going to set the, uh, and we can select some package we want. I'm pretty, how to say, I'm, uh, this is what I want, so I continue with the installation here. Okay, so now the installation is going to run. And I'm going to make a jump in the movie, and you will see how it looks like at the end. Alright, so everything is installed right now, and it's uh, and we just continue with this by pressing return here. Now it sees that the time appears to be wrong, and it gives us, asks, us, it asks if this time is the right one, and yes it is. In my case it was. Okay, so now it congratulates us that we have all to, we have installed OpenBSD right now. So the interesting thing that we should not miss is that we have a mail waiting for us. So let's reboot now. You reboot by typing reboot and press return. Remember to remove the CD if it's inside so you don't boot the CD again. And here we have it. Now we have an OpenBSD installed and ready to use. So you proceed with login with your root account and you add your password. And now you can check the mail by typing mail. And you can select the mail from uh, Theo de Rat and it press by one. And you can see here what they have been writing about OpenBSD, for example. So take some time and read this one. To save this mail, just press X and press return. Okay, now we're back in the console again. Uh, as you can see, we have our OpenBSD installed right now. And uh, uh, that's what this tutorial was covering, uh, how to install the OpenBSD system uh, at its very simple mode by using the entire disk. Uh, there will be other tutorials going on, which will be ready in a few, uh, few days. Uh, which would be how to install op uh, OpenBSD in advanced mode, like how to install it uh, with uh, to make some advanced partitioning instead of using the entire disk like that. 
Uh, okay, so that was everything. I hope uh, this tutorial was helpful and uh, take care everyone.